Okay, so um, Michael and I are going to throw tall forms. So that's our next assignment. Um, tall forms can be anything in the realm of like what we might consider bases, um, pitchers. It's a really popular form. I'll show you guys how to um, add handles um, for like an appropriate base and how to make a um, a little net uh, and throw it for for a pitcher if you guys are interested in that. Um, but other than that, well, we're just going to go ahead and get started. I'm working with about six pounds of clay here, so this is a little bit more than you've probably been working with, unless you've made a large six pound bowl. Um, but how, how much clay do you have? This is about a little bit over a half back. Half back, so, so that's like maybe like 13, 14. Cool. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started, and we'll talk like back and forth, and obviously we're videoing, so we'll try not to mess up. <laughs> um, but if you guys have questions along the way, please don't hesitate to ask. Go ahead, let's start. I'll say I uh, really wedged this VMix uh, before um, I brought it over here to the wheel. I spiral wedged it, right? So the clay is already, already starting to line up in the right direction for centering. Um, as I'm centering this, I'm really pushing in at the base here, right? Around seven o'clock. Um, with the heel of my hand and really forcing that clay to um, come up. So Michael's got a similar approach. His hand motion is a little different, you can see. He is kind of working his hands on opposite sides, uh, really forcing a lot of um, pressure with his left hand around like seven or eight o'clock, and then pulls with the opposite hand, his right hand, around two o'clock and really kind of forces that in. Um, do you? Do you like to have one hand higher than the other while you're doing this? No, they're usually about the same height because what I do also do is like I dig my finger into it to kind of move more clay at once. So when I do that on my other hand in the back, kind of smooth that clay out so it doesn't create so much spiral on it. So one thing that um, we're doing today is we're, we're definitely throwing with a lot of clay. Um, you can create tall forms from just like three pounds of clay. So um, I think it's something that I kind of like work up towards is something like this large. This is definitely, I can't, um, I would never ask you guys to like work on projects that require this much amount of clay. Um, but if you want to work more in like the three pound range just to kind of get started with a little bit more clay than like the two, two and a half pounds for your bowls, um, this is a good spot. This is, again, this is probably six pounds, maybe seven. So, um, and I'm working kind of similarly to Michael um, as far as like coning up and coning down. It does require a little bit more um, body. Um, so I'm really kind of like using my torso here. I really do lock my, my elbow into my torso here on my side, like a little chicken wing, right? So I got my little chicken wing going. And I really do use like the weight of my body um, as, as kind of like a fulcrum. So I'm, I'm really kind of like it's almost like I'm flexing my forearm, you know, just to make sure that it like holds in place. And pull, pulling that clay towards towards that, that point. And forcing it down right over top. And then when I get down to this bottom part, my pressure shifts from being on top of the clay down to the side. And I feel like that helps um, center the clay a little bit more. It's always this bottom part that's that's the most challenging for me. Um, so I'll really have to like work work that up and down. So like Adam says, like you know, we really tuck our elbows in. For most of the people they have like hard time keeping in, so I usually told them just like you know, if you go if you go lean forward and just tuck your elbow kind of into your like your hips, into your pelvis bone right here, and just kind of use that as an anchor. Instead of just like tuck it in, sometimes people have hard times to get pushed back. Just kind of tuck it in and just use your body to push it. Um, one other thing with the tall forms, I, I've seen this a lot um, where students will um, get pretty close to center, right, or, or kind of close, and then go ahead and dive right in, you know, create your well and open it up. And once you start to raise your walls, there's like alarm bells start going off, like your pieces start to really flop. You know, um, so one thing that I, I think it's, it's really crucial with creating a tall form is, is centering well. So you're going to have to spend, maybe spend a little bit more time on that, 
Um, if it's another like five minutes per piece, um, that's okay. I'm I'm kind of I'm feeling good about my centeredness. How are you doing, Michael? I'm almost there. Okay. So one other thing when I'm when I'm centering for tall forms, I like to center kind of tall here, so you can kind of see that. And I get that from the coning up and coning down process. So when I'm coning up, I'm really pushing the clay in uh, here at the base. So that narrows my base a little bit, right? Um, and I'm able to get that clay up. Michael, I might move on to the next step. Yep, I'm ready. So. Uh, I'm starting to get a little bit of a, I'm kind of tinkering around a little bit too much here at the top, so I'm kind of getting a little wobble, but um, this, if, I know I've talked about keeping your thumbs together, not diving right into your piece. Um, same goes for this, even though it's like taller and you know you have to really get in there. Um, I will keep my elbows tucked in real tight to my body. I start to get really over the clay, and I'm, I'm really kind of like, my hands are really riding that clay now, this larger amount. Um, but I really make sure that my hands are in contact with, with each other. If they start to float away from each other, that's where um, bad news bears can happen. It starts to like really get wobbly, you can get thick and thin spots. So just keep your thumbs together. So I'll pause after I get two or three inches of my well, my little water. We'll watch the outside. Don't forget to water the outside. Keep that slick. Keep my elbows in. I'm right over top of my clay. And now my thumbs do start to kind of like dive down. If you're diving your, your thumbs down and they're pretty vertical, and you start to feel them moving around, stop what you're doing. Back away and start to use your middle two fingers instead. Okay? It might just be that um, you know you haven't developed the dexterity yet or the muscle memory yet, um, to keep those thumbs together um, without wobbling. So one way to get that back on center is to come in with like your middle two fingers, right? So the thumb is working. As I'm getting in there, my thumbs are, I'm really starting to roll my wrists inwards, right? Like this, so I can get a little deeper. And it's a little bit more difficult, I find. I don't know about you, Michael. Um, like we're like hosting this like cooking show or something. <laughs> um, if the camera weren't going, we wouldn't talk about this. But um, I find it a little more difficult to discern like the thickness of my base of my floor, the taller it is, right? So even though I have a lot more experience, or I have, I have a lot of experience working here on the wheel, I will stop him. I'm making the tall form, and I'll, I'll check the thickness using my needle tool. So, reach down in there. All right, this is telling me the thickness is about almost an inch, maybe a little over an inch. I'm gonna go down a little further. So for me, normally I don't do that um, because I usually don't trim my foot on the hut on tall form. I just kind of carve away. If you see those um, bases over there. I create this like certain like small feet on them instead of like trimming them and then create um, a well trimmed bottom. Kind of create a little pedestal. So I usually just go down as far as I feel like it. I'll double check. Yeah, trimming tall forms, um, this is a different form, different art form altogether. Um, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, all right, I'm gonna leave that. I've got about seven eighths of an inch. That's good. Enough. All right, so now opening this up, it's a lot more difficult, a lot more challenging than say a cup or a bowl, right? Um, I've got a pretty narrow uh, well, um, so I have to be very careful that um, you know I I don't have any like quick motions. So I always really think about like soft hands, you know. So it's like soft hands on, soft hands off. You never want to touch your clay unless it's spinning, right? So make sure like if, whenever you go to like stop your wheel for any reason that you take your hands off before you stop it. So right now what I'm doing is I'm really squeezing and clamping over here towards like, towards like three o'clock. 
Okay, so I'm using more like my first three fingers. Um, with smaller forms, I'm using like my middle two fingers. With this, I'm really pushing over almost my whole hand. Okay, so I have my thumb locked in over my outer hand, so they're they're kind of like basically pinching in together, um, and they're staying uniform. So when Adam opened, he used his two thumb to go all the way down, so he got them more nail in the hole. When I what I do is I use the finger that the pressure kind of like motion like this. I press not just down and also flaring out. I pull it like creating a little bit more angle. So when I'm opening it, there's a little bit bigger um, well I can go in and open it up. For me, that's a little bit easier. So once you get deeper, like you know, you kinda have to kind of force your hand into this really weird position. Kind of to kind of create that once you get deep. And then the same thing when opening up, your left hand just the seven o'clock and then your right hand things like this kind of get that really nice compression. So I open this up, the, the floor of my piece um, is about the size of like a softball, right? So it's about like four inches across. Um, now my clay wall, if I, if I squeeze here um, with both hands, I kind of feel the thickness of my clay wall. It's, it's pretty lumpy. Um, it's basically taking on the, the shape of my hand when I was opening up my well, right? Um, and so the top here is quite thick, it's about two inches thick. And it definitely gets a lot thinner down here. So what I want to do, the first thing I want to do is get a nice, um, concise uh, clay wall. So I'm going to actually go um, over, or I'm, I'm going to go above that thinner area, and I'm going to start to compress this top part to pull a wall. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, so I want it all to be about the same before I really start pulling my walls. So my inside hand and my outside hand are able to touch. Once we get a little further along, our hands are going to have to work independent of one another. Um, but right now, when they when they can touch, um, I like to keep them in contact. So, all right. So I've got about the same wall thickness. And this little wall here, a little bowl, just to kind of compress that. I got a little bit of height there, but I really, really not working on that. So this is where, oh, I, don't, I don't know if you have anything to add yet before mm -hmm. I, I get what up. So this is where I really start to throw a little differently than I have in the past with other forms. So again, I'm going for a tall form. Now, with a tall form, you're gonna have a lot more clay, right? Usually, okay, um, that you wanna get higher up. So when you're pulling a wall, if I've got all of this weighty clay up here. I've got at least like four pounds of clay right, right here in this top, like you know, four or five inches. And I pull a wall down here and I thin that area out. What do you think are some problems I might find? Or what do you think might happen? Could collapse. Yeah, if I really put a lot of pressure here, right? Um, what else? Maybe try it even. Say again? The thing, yeah, the walls, yeah, the, the thicknesses will be a little different, could be uneven. Um, one of the biggest problems with just throwing tall forms and working out those walls from the bottom up is you'll get some twists, right? So you get that thin spot, and then as you're starting to pull your wall up, you're gonna kind of like start to uh, encounter this thicker clay above, right? And so you're gonna really start to like pull at that clay, and it starts to twist. Um, so you get these like kind of weird little spots and, and it becomes like weak spots, right? And it doesn't want to hold up the clay above it. So this is where it really differs from what I've been doing in the past. I basically divide this up into thirds or halves. There's something like this amount, I'm going to do it in thirds. So I'm actually going to pull my wall the top third. Okay, so I'll pull a wall, and then I'll go down to the middle third. I'll pull that wall, and then I'll go down to the bottom. So I pull this pull, um, pulling from the top down. That's where you keep the, the top down so so here's where Adam and I kind of split on our technique. Um, he usually divide them up and throw them in section. What I do is I cone up and bring to the height I want before I actually start pulling and like shaping to thin out evenly. And after each pull, I usually cone this in a little bit. And I'm just pulling towards myself and kind of squeezing at the same time. Um, whenever I'm going tall, I might, I'm, I think I'm just gonna start with like basically a cylinder right now. Whenever I'm throwing tall, I always like to cone in the top. Keep that in. If it starts to really flare out, you can really lose it fast. Okay. So alright, I did that top third. Now I'm gonna go into the 
bottom third. And this is where my hands are really working independent of one another. So I really make sure I lock my elbows into my body. You can see, as I'm raising up, I'm also raising up my torso. And I get up to, I, I raise that wall, that middle section, and I get to the top section where the wall's already thin, and I finish that pull all the way up. I'll release that pressure once I get to the thinner area in the, in the top section. Um, so if I keep that pressure going, then I'm gonna be a thinner top section. I don't want that yet. I wanna get a nice, concise wall. So again, yeah, just working from the top down. So every time I come up, I'll go back and try to open up the inside a little bit because if you just continue coning up, eventually the hole will be really small before you put your hand in. So you wanna kind of stop at it like this side and kind of just go back and give a little pressure to kind of bring it open a little bit. I've been the top two thirds, and I'm gonna go down to the bottom. And pretty decent amount of pressure there at the base. So I'm getting now up into the thinner area. I'm gonna release that pressure. So I'm still gonna finish this pull. You notice my left elbow is kind of like hanging out in space. Okay, so now, right now I'm just kind of like feeling this thickness, kind of looking at what I have here, it's kind of belly out. So I want to get a fairly concise cylinder before I change the form at all. So I might actually just leave it as a cylinder, I like, I like cylinders. And then one thing is once you have really tall form, you want to make sure maybe like get on the your forearm to get like a moisture on it so it's a bit and stick to the base itself, especially like you have a thin like me, you need to do the pulling form like I don't what I do. So I want to make sure you got moisture all the way around. Sometimes if I put my forearm in and see how it completely sealed it, I'll just open it back up a little bit on top. Just give it a little bit more room for me to put my arm in it. So I just want to uh, kind of compress that, that very bottom like an inch or so. And so I'm just pulling another little quick wall, but I started at the bottom with this one. And I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm getting to the right thickness. This is getting rather tall. Uh, it's taller than I really plan to go, but... Reaching in a lot, using a lot more water, obviously. Um, so making sure there's not too much water down there. Once I have the tall form, I'll just start pulling like normally. Same thing from the bottom. Because I already did the um, pull, or I did, um, I do the comb up to get all the clay up. So they're more evenly throughout. So when I'm pulling right now, I'm just kind of give it a really gentle pressure. Just kind of feeling the clay and move some of the clay up. And before your hand really steady. Yeah, so I decided to kind of Try to claim some of that bottom inch, really force it in. Um, you can see that my pieces, the cylinder is really starting to wobble a little bit at the top. It's a little less wobbly below. Um, you can really control that wobble if you just kind of like lock your hands in.
So now the moment of what do we make with it? So I didn't pull all the way through. I kind of stopped like right here. And then usually it's just because I get tired pulling the whole thing. So I kind of just stop right there. And I'll go back, kind of switch my pen position instead of pulling like this. I'll use my I'll hold my right hand, kind of like you know, compress it, doing like this this motion. You still give the same amount of pressure, but since it's so high up, it's actually easier to control using a different position of your hand or a whole different position when you pull. So I've decided to belly out the base here. I'm going to make kind of like a bottle form, um, more like a Korean, very traditional like Korean base. Um, so I'm going to start at the very bottom here. I really want to work from from uh, this area. I don't want to, want to uh, ever shape like the top half first, right? And then focus on the bottom afterwards. I always want to shape it from the bottom up. Um, so that way, uh, otherwise, if you start to really work on the top part, the bottom's going to um, get quite wobbly on you actually, and it won't do what you want it to do. Right, so I'm going to switch to a rib and push out on the inside and just try to belly this bottom piece out. So now I get the height I want, I usually go back and just kind of compress the bottom and put it on the bottom. But since like it's so high up right now, sometimes we'll just stand up and make sure like you know, the entire arm is wet and put it in. Same thing, let me throw like I'm trying to get as close as I can and hold my hand and body really steady on it. Usually for me, the, the second pull is lesser than the first one. The first one I'm trying to move more clay. The second pull I'm just kind of gently with a lot less pressure when I'm moving the clay. So um, I keep going down to the bottom of my piece. If I really want to belly it out, you don't want to do that like in one motion. I'm doing this in like several passes essentially. starting from the very bottom, pushing out, and then once I get up to like this shoulder area, I stop and I go back down a little bit. And from here, if I Constructing a very um, concise cylinder where the thickness of the wall is pretty similar from the top to the bottom. What I've done by bellying this area, I've got, thin, I've got thinner clay here than I do actually up here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into like this is the area we call like the neck. I'll start to pull this up. Okay, so I'll start to pull there. But I have to be very careful because the clay below is really soft, right, and thin, and it's holding up all this clay above it. So I don't want to. Um, torque it too much and apply too much pressure. So I definitely need to make sure it's wet. So it's like this weird medium, like every time I add water to it, I'm getting the clay a little softer, right? Um, and I don't want it to get too soft. So I need to firm up to hold, hold up this, this top section. For me, once I have the height I want, I'll take a rib, I'll go back in, and just very slowly kind of shaping it out while I, just, while I want it. So this time I'm just going to create a normal base. I'm just gently pressing, kind of pressing on the belly to get it out. Eventually I'm going to get stuck around the shoulder, the neck area. Make 
sure you're cleaning your hand and you're like working on big form. It's like small form set my idea. If you lost your if you lost your tools in there, it can cause damage. It's like scramble up the entire interior. When I'm trying to go back and fix it, it's gonna be really hard. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting close to the shape that I like, that I want to make. Um, the top's a little... Once I thinned it out and I compressed it one more time, you guys saw that, right? And I was collaring it in. So I'm collaring in that top part. Again, notice how slow the wheel's going. I'm really torquing this clay in here. This is like the danger zone. Whenever you're working above, like these like bellied out areas, right? The areas we call like the shoulders. These are kind of like the weak spot. Once there's like a transition of, of shape, right, and form, um, this area can be really weak actually because it's it's it can be thin and also uh, it's cantilevered, right, and it's changing form. So this is another area you have to kind of like watch for. Um, just go kind of slow. I'm kind of getting lucky right now. It's actually kind of working out, but um, it doesn't always work. I'm not making large forms like this, so I'm glad I have it on video. I'm gonna switch over to the, um, the convex, the round part of one of these ribs. Try to get rid of some of these throwing lines. So I kind of want this to be rather smooth. So I'm pressing out towards the, I'm push, pushing out towards my uh, rib tool here. And I think I'm pretty close to finishing. I'm going to take off uh, a little bit off this top here. So for me, once I belly out the shape I want it, I go back and clean the outside just a little bit to make sure everything's clean so I can take a good look see if like, that's how I want it. And now I'll go back to the shoulder and neck part and kind of work on the the, the rest of it. So this is a pretty simple form um, in appearance. Uh, these are these can be a little bit more challenging, but um, I think it's kind of like the fun of uh, making tall forms. Is really kind of like discovering the challenges of you know what happens um, when I belly an area out down here. You know what happens when I collar in the bottom and then belly out the top. You know like the opposite of this, right? They like tall open bowl form. You know, what are the challenges of those different forms? Um, ultimately, the one thing you have to really be aware of with tall forms is that your the your wall thickness it, is, a, is that a, on a taper, right? Like the bottom of it needs to be a little bit thicker than all of the rest of it. Um, because any of those transitions, you gotta think about all the clay that it's holding up, you know, above it. And those transitions need to be a little bit thicker. Alright Michael, I'm getting close. How are you? Uh, I'm almost there. I'm just finishing the neck and the lips and I'm going to go back and finish the bottom and pretty much done. So now I'm just stretching out the neck area because they come it in so the clay will compound itself. So you want to stretch that out so you kind of pull it just a little bit taller. And compress the rim. So I'm, I think I'm like pretty much done with mine. Um, I'll clean up the back, just get all this clay off of here. Uh, I'm not gonna wire it off just yet because it's so fragile and soft right now. You know, a lot more pulls go into this, a lot more water goes into creating a form like this, right? So the, the clay is actually a lot softer than usually when I like make a cup, right? Even though my cups are thinner. Um, so I'm gonna let this spin. Um, so this is what I would challenge you to do or, or urge you to do if you're making, when you're making your tall forms. 
is um, let them spin like slowly. We go maybe a little faster than this. Um, but you know, as we have like the air and ventilation going in here, there's some air movement. If you just leave it sit on the wheel, um, one side of it is going to get drier than the other side, and we can have some cracking, right, um, or some failures, uh, structural failures. So what I like to do is just let it spin, all right, and this is going to help it actually firm up a little bit. Some of that moisture is going to evaporate. Make sure you get all of the water out of the inside, okay, before you actually move on. So I want to make sure I wring out my sponges, and this, or I might stand up to make sure I don't mess this up. So right now I'm going no, back. Sorry. No, you're fine. Right now I'm going back using the rip kind of just to get rid of some of the extra clay down there. Uh, if you're gonna trim it, you can just leave them like where I'm at right now. Kind of really smooth so when you go back and trim it, it'll be easier. But for me, I usually like to get rid of a lot of clay down here. Kind of create a pedestal where, where the base is sitting on. So I'll just take the rip, hold it really steady, and just jam it in and get rid of it as much clay as possible, which is just extra step you definitely don't have to follow. Um, so yeah, I'll let this sit um, on the wheel for 20 minutes, let it spin at a slow speed, okay? So be aware if like other people are, are letting that happen or they're, they're not sitting at the wheel, so be careful that you're like not bumping into someone's piece, you know? Um, I think it's important that you let it spin before you actually slice it off. Um, even better is if you work on that, okay? So I'm working on my um, my special, really thick bats. Whenever I work on amounts of clay over five pounds, I like to have these, these thicker bats because once I lift them up, they don't flex, they don't taco, right? Um, so I want this to stiffen up before I slice it off or before I pick it up. Um, you know, let it firm up slightly and then you can keep it in a damp cabinet. If it can fit on your shelf, keep it on your shelf. Um, even like covered so it can kind of dry slowly. Um, yeah. Looks yeah. great, Michael. So for me, once I did that process, I cleaned up all the extra clay that's on the bottom. And I usually I don't slice off either, I just left it on. And then I left it long, actually longer than that. Um, because sometimes I'll let it get kind of like almost too letter hard, maybe like the beginning edge of letter hard. And I'll come in and take a trimming tool, kind of just like, or a uh, uh, metal rib. Just kind of clean up more of the clay on the bottom to kind of light up. You know, lighten the, the weight of the base itself. But then once I'm done, once I've done that, I'll cut it off, spray more water, and put it into the hand So yeah. Yeah, so some things you can do while your piece is sitting, stiffening up, um, you know, you can wedge up clay for your next piece, right? Uh, that's a good option. Um, you can glaze some of your other work, uh, finish any of your other work, but it is really important, I think, uh, that you let it firm up a little bit before you slice it off um, and get some, take it off the wheel. So I think that's really crucial. Um, working on homework, reading a book, uh, anything else, uh, oh, if you need to leave and come back, you know, um, that's totally fine. But yeah, definitely let it sit for a little bit, at least 20 minutes, I'd say. All right, you guys have any questions? Cool. Stop for you.